Let's start off today here with just the tiniest little bit of blue and white. Blue and white, but mostly white. Because what I want to do, of course, I've got clear gel all over the canvas, just, just on the top, not on the bottom. And I've got a basic sketch. That's all the blue I need is right there. I'm going to just work that blue in and around because that's going to be my very pale, washed out sky. Very, very soft today. I used a nice light purple so that if it does mix with the um, with the color that I've got here, it'll be, it'll be good and it'll work within the sky and it won't be weird and it won't compete, you know, at all with it. So there we go. Hey, before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did of my last one. It's always fun to see what you're doing. So share there using the information on the screen. And if I see your painting in time, I'll get it in the next video. I'm going to mix together my green, my yellow. There's some Hunza yellow, white. Yeah, that'll be pretty good. I don't need a, a perfect color. I just want some sort of a light green. That's going to go here in the background. There we go. Yeah, that works. I'm going to leave a lot of these little holes. What the holes do, they'll just, they'll let some of that light shine through. I don't want it perfect. And I don't want that many holes. I actually want some of it kind of solid so that I can put maybe even some green, some darker greens around it. That'd be nice. That does basically what I wanted the umber to do, which is just warm it up a little. Not such a cold, cold green. There, that obviously looks a little bit dark even now, like up here, not super bright, but when we put our dark stuff over it, that'll actually look like a highlight. We may not need to brighten it at all, which is kind of cool. Just slap and paint down because honestly, we can take a shop towel and mush it and, and fuzz it. Now I do want to see even like, I'm probably going to paint in these little holes after the fact, because I just want it to look like that. I want it to have that painted look to the holes in the sky. But for now, this is a good start. Now for the most important part of the painting, I'm going to crumple up a shop towel and just kind of get it ready. When you do this, you kind of want to pay a little bit more attention to the texture of the towel. If you get that kind of nice random texture there, it's going to work better. Now I'm just going to tap. And I'm okay if I if I fill in some of these holes, it's a, it's going to be okay because I'm actually going to I'm planning at least if I can get enough of this paint off the canvas. I want to paint the little holes back in because I just think it'd be interesting and it'd be a little different. Let me wipe off some of that background color there. And so by doing that, the kind of the making of the leaves, I'm just giving myself another texture that I think works. I like to have more than one texture in my paintings. It really makes it makes it better. <laughs> yes, that is definitely the technical art term. It makes it better. It's important. <laughs> I'm going to grab some, this is just some darker green. And I remember I wiped this area off so I can actually place in this darker green up here in the corner. And it should stick and it should be totally nice and dark, which it is. That's good. That's going according to plan. <laughs> you ever been doing a painting where it doesn't go according to plan? <laughs> yeah. My advice is wipe the canvas off. That's usually what I do. There. Of course, it's totally subjective and you do whatever you want with your painting. It'll be fun to see your version. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm just trying to add that much more interest. I don't want it just to be green everywhere. I want it just to feel a little cool in these trees. So I'm going to put that in right here. And that's, what, that's exactly what it's going to do. Feel a little bit of coolness in there. And then it's going to make a, a big difference. If you get 10 subtle variations in color. I'm not talking about wacky and wild, subtle, but yet you can still distinguish them. That's where you're really gonna really come to the next level with your painting. There, and you can see very subtle, but yet just distinguishable. There's some yellow ochre. Obviously all this is gonna be blotted again. So the technique and the brush stroke that you use to lay it down, pretty much irrelevant at this point. That's okay. Now I'm going to remove this shop towel that I placed up here. It's been just maybe 10, 15 minutes. No, not even that long, probably. But it just absorbed a little bit of more of that excess oil. I'm doing everything that I can to keep myself from mixing mud right here on this next step. What is the next step? Well, the next step is going to be putting in those little sky holes that we've been talking about. I'm going to take some white, of course, little bit of blue, not much blue. All right, that works right there. Let's try this and see what happens. I'm going to just place on right here. I don't want so much paint <laughs> that it's caked on thick, but yet I do want it kind of thick because thick 
is um, is typically more opaque, and I want that brush strokey kind of look. I'm going for something different here. Oh, that's pretty. That's exactly what I want right there. See all of that? That's worth it. Wipe my brush because it will be picking up green. I will end up getting a turquoise if I'm not careful. So I'm just going to continue. Is this going to be a little slow? Yeah, a little, a little slow. If this doesn't come off your brush like it's coming off mine, it's because you need to wipe off, wipe out the brush on a shop towel. Or... Hey, you know what I need to do? I need to give a special thanks to our Patreon members, and we're going to run the credits right here. And if you're not on Patreon, you're missing out because we're doing live streams, and I did a live Q&A just last night as of the recording of this video. But um, it's a lot of fun, so definitely check it out if you're interested in more painting content. Also, some really long lessons up there. Now I'm going to mix up some sort of um, little color that's got a little warmth in it. There it is right there. Found it. <laughs> it was hidden on the palette the whole time. Let's get in just what's going to be the beginning stages of a flowery bush or two. What this is going to do is it's going to actually play a very important role of offsetting what's going to be a pink tree here that I'm hoping doesn't look too out of place. Now that looks pretty good, but I'm going to I'm going to um, put in some now some greens and whatnot. So you transition to those yellow, tons of yellow tones, even some yellow ochre tones. And basically just get in this little bushy area. Black, of course, on the bottom to create the shadows. Pretty straightforward. And then we'll just dabble it with a shop towel. Pretty much the same as everything else. Now I'm going to take the filbert brush right through some of that same green we had going on back up in here. Let me start more in the darker sections just in case. Yeah, in case that's just a little too dark. So let me lighten it up just a little. I want to get a nice color that's very much green, not too much anything else going on, just for, you know, the purposes of pulling my tree branches in, my tree trunks. Technically, I kind of already have the tree trunks. There may really be no need to paint them in, but there you go. It's some, some areas that may be useful to paint in, maybe like right there. If you need to kind of reestablish a tree trunk or, or two in that background, you can do that. You know, I kind of like it just being misty and, and kind of blown out. The highlights are blown out. I like that. So maybe we'll just sort of work with it and not, not mess too much with it. How about that? I like it and this is not adding much, so why, why do it? And that's a, I tell you, that's something that we all could use a little more of is evaluating whether or not what we're doing is making a positive impact to the painting or a negative impact. There we go. That's nice. Oh, that's pretty right there. I think we can work with that. To me, that is just decent. Now with my earth tones, basically just white, yellow ochre, red, just all that good stuff. I'm going to paint in my dirt for the dirt road down here, the path. Probably nothing more than a footpath by the time we're done with it, you know. You could just as well turn it into any kind of a road you like. Look at that. A little bit lighter, a little bit more. Um, just well, honestly in the white, toward the white side here, as you go back, I don't know that I want it overly yellow ochre because that is not, that's very cool. In fact, maybe we need it going cooler as we go back. In fact, I would say for sure we do. For sure we do. A little cooler. That will help it to recede. There it is right there. Let's see what that does. Not too dark. Fairly light. Let's see. Kind of a snowy color there if it was in a, the context of a different painting, huh? Get some of that in. Just, just cover the canvas. Main goal here is to cover the canvas. We'll work out all the details of it later. Okay, there it is. My main goal is now achieved. <laughs> I've covered the canvas. Great. Now, I think it would be wise to go ahead and wipe this off with a shop towel right now. Starting, of course, in the back. I'm just going to kind of dabble and blot that a little bit because I don't want it to be too too much where you can see the brush strokes of it. That's that's better. Like I said, you probably didn't even need to put paint there. And I'm going to just rub that pigment well into the canvas where I couldn't get it to come off if I wanted to. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is get just a little light color, maybe some umber. I need to squirt some more umber out, but a little bit more umber, a little bit of yellow ochre. And I just want to create little patches of sunlight here within this pathway exactly like I did with the sky, pretty much. There we go, just little touches of 
this light smattering through. Very pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Just little hits of that light and a little bit more as you go back here because I'm, I'm expecting there to be a little bit more sunlight kind of in the background area. Still spotty, still shadowy. Not in any way totally solid, but there you go. Just a smattering of highlight, just enough to show there's a little interest going on. A little, oh, there's a little something. Now I've just placed in some purple or pink up here just as a starting place for, for doing some of this pink tree, which is gonna really nicely fill in that side. That's why we kept this so limited in paint. We don't want much color back here. That's why I wiped off so much of it because otherwise I would not have pink, I would have brown. <laughs> and brown wasn't exactly what I was going for today. So there you go. You just sometimes you gotta go a little thicker if you're gonna go over those tree trunks. But anyway, so that's basically the idea. I did this with a filbert brush. You don't have to, but that's what I ended up doing today. And maybe what we'll do is grab a shop towel and just sort of, just not, not go crazy this time, not like the background, but I wanna show you a different way. Rather than just like really go into town, what you can do is just barely touch it. I think I've got full, uh, full video on this that I put here on YouTube not long ago, but I just wanna barely touch it and work those leaves in to the background, not destroying anything, but just, just softening it a little. And it also helps me to get, uh, you know, to get a nice base tone, obviously, for our highlights, which we'll do here in a moment after I finish this. So there you go. It's not just one step. There's a few steps to making a nice flowering tree. And I think this is probably the most important is just to, to blot some of that just so it doesn't look like you did it with, a, with only the filbert brush, but you kind of have other things going on as well. Already better, kind of fills it in, makes it look a little bit more natural. Now I've got a nice bright pink color here mixed up. A little bit of yellow ochre in it is good. Obviously you got your white and red. Lots of paint on that detail round brush. More paint than brush. The light's kind of filtering through the painting, mostly in this direction. So we're not gonna have a whole lot of light. Maybe just the, just the left hand side, the top left is gonna catch the light. This has been wiped away pretty good. So I don't have a lot to, to worry about. But I'm just gonna dabble on some of these leaves. And I think this is interesting. Sometimes we, you know, we don't take the lighting seriously enough. And, and it would be very easy to just come and do highlights everywhere. I may do mid-tones everywhere, but I'm gonna try to keep my highlights on this edge because in my mind, that's about the only place the highlight's gonna hit real distinct. And obviously you gotta go outside the dark if you want this to show up bright. You gotta come outside the dark. And if you're getting green instead of pink, what you need to do is wipe off that background or else just absorb the oil from it. Either way, we'll be, you know, fine. Now I've got a slightly darker purpley pink color, and you can see there's my highlights that we just did, and then I floated a couple of mid-tones, but look at this. Do you see how I've, I've still left my base tone, my shadows? I like that a lot. It really looks like the light's just filtering and just spilling through, but not too much, you know? Keep this site kind of dark. And, and I just noticed, you're like, wow, I, I kind of like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop right there. Well, then what am I showing you? <laughs> I'm gonna show you just making these leaves a little bit better. I, I got a little bit of a cooler, a uh, little bit of a cooler purpley tone here. And I'm gonna come in and just like some of these where I did them quick with a filbert brush and mashed them with a little shop towel. I can get in now and just make them a little better. Yeah, see that? I'm just gonna hit some of these darker areas. Just try to pull out, I don't care about the middle so much. I just, I do care about the outsides. Try to pull out some of that detail like right up in here where you can totally tell it's just smooshed in. At least pull in a few blossoms here. I, I keep thinking they're leaves, they're not. They're little flowery trees. In, and occasionally I'll see these trees in nature where they're just totally, especially in the, well, only in the springtime, they'll just be solid flowers from top to bottom. It's wonderful. And that's what kind of tree this is. Very pretty. Now with this darker green, I'm gonna focus more attention on the left side. Just, just try to Try to increase a little bit of the contrast up here. Not try not too much to damage my trees. I don't want to, you know, fill it in too much. That would be kind of a waste of time, considering what we've already done. But that's better already. I like that better already. There we go. Even just a little bit of that purpley blue right right up there on there. There we go on that one. Just to change it up. I am just trying to get a nice little. Nice little tree color, nice little highlight, nothing too crazy. 
not even that vibrant, really. So that kind of muddying it down just a little. Don't want it too crazy. And you know what? I can I can hit it there with a highlight toward the end, but sometimes it's better to hold back if you can. A lot of this is very little paint on there. And I touch it with my handle and I'm not worried about messing it up because I've wiped so much of it off. I've absorbed a lot of it as well as wiping it. So I'm, I'm safe, <laughs> very safe when it comes to this. No worries at all. Just continuing to use this little brush and just bring in a few of these little floaty kind of limbs, the floaty leaves, not not the um, not the comma leaves yet, although we may, but just a see that? just a floaty leaf. And I like that where the, you can kind of see the structure of the branch. It's not just um, round circles all over the place, but my branches are actually very linear. That's important. If you don't make your branches linear, they're not going to look as natural. Now, this may not seem like the most exciting step in the world, and I'd say it certainly isn't. But I'm going to take just some black, a little bit of green, blue on my detail brush. And why the detail brush? Well, just because it's soft. And soft means it layers better than something that's stiff, which would tend to push through and cut through the paint. It doesn't layer as nicely. Although it does have its place, you know, for things like creating texture. But for, for something like this, where I'm trying to layer my paint over my wet paint, I've got to be kind of careful. I'm using 80% black here. Now, the reason this is important is because I'm creating a dramatic amount of contrast up here that I didn't have. I didn't have it because uh, I just haven't painted it in that dark yet, knowing, you know, that it's easier to do my greens and stuff before I do the darkest of the darks because of the dark darks are kind of hard to paint over, if you know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, <laughs> you haven't been painting that long. There you go. I've got a soft pink color mixed up here, a little blue in it, fairly soft on my clean detail round brush. And as I stand back and I look, which I do quite frequently, I notice beautiful, I like that, I like this, it's not done, but it's going to be nice and punchy when it is done. But it's something right here, now I love these trees, but, but right, maybe right here in this blank spot, I don't know. We're going to know real quick though, we've got to have some sort of a pink tree represented here in the background because it's too unnatural to have that pink tree without anything else represented at all in the background. Now, I was being very conservative. It looks like I need to go a little bit more to the wild side there because that doesn't read like pink to me. Oh, there it is right there. Now, I've got very limited paint. This has been wiped and blotted and also absorbed. I mean, it's this is basically dry background, so I, I'm pretty confident. Plus, I don't mind uh, pink and green don't make anything but just a pleasant brown, so it'll be fine either way. If you're, if you're not, um, if you haven't controlled the paint like I have on the canvas, now is a good time to go ahead and blot that area before you put your pink tree in. But it just needs it. Bad. See that? Wow. Big difference. Is that super impactful? No, I don't want it to be. You know, I want it to be fairly subtle, but it makes a big, to me, a big difference. In fact, I don't need it. You know, it could be one of those trees that has a long stem, but stem, you know what I mean. But not leaves all the way down. Limbs and flowers, I mean, not leaves. Now I'm gonna mix here just a little bit of our linseed oil with our pink, lighter pink, same one I used over on the tree. Just remixed it, same color though, for the most part, really. I mean, it's just red and white, you know. But now, of course, I gotta make sure I don't have too much in the brush. But now I'm gonna go ahead and work in some of the highlights here to these bushes. He said, well, why, why use the liner brush for this? Well, it's just easier. I find myself using the liner brush more and more for things other than tree limbs. You know, when you first learn to paint, that's all you do is tree limbs with it. But I don't know, over the years, I just found it so useful for so many things. If you get too, you know, if you get that too busy, if I had a clean brush, I could show you, but <laughs> my clean brushes are getting kind of limited, but maybe not the best brush for the job, but you would just take something like a bristle brush and you just tap it. And see how that just, because it's thin, it just blends it right into, into the background. That'll be useful there, less useful on these, because I kind of want individual little effects. Just little dots here and there. I'm not going to go too crazy. They don't all have to be the very same color. And I would say that the paint consistency here, if you're curious about paint consistency, I'd say it's about half of the normal consistency. You see, it's not very runny at all. Hope you can see that. One of the last things I'm going to do here is add some detail to the trees using the liner brush. 
some branches here and there, make sure you match the color. Sometimes you'll need to lighten the color just a little more than just whatever you used here because it doesn't mix with the background as, as easily. And so it'll, it'll appear a little darker than even like your tree trunk, even though it's the same identical color. So little tip, throw some white in if it's looking a little bit too dark compared to the tree trunk. You want it to really match the tree trunk, if not be just a little bit lighter than the tree trunk, at least. That's kind of the way I found that it looks the best, typically. I see that just a few. I don't need tons up here. I don't want to make it so busy. I like seeing some of those blurry ones there in the background, so those blurry trees and then my sharper trees. I'm only really doing limbs to the sharp trees. I don't want to bring the blurry trees too far forward in the painting. I think that would <laughs> slightly defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? Well, that about wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.